scientific proof that Republicans are killing young women. This is amazing. This has got to be uh, one of the most shocking scientific studies of the year. It was published last week in the Journal of the American Medical Association's JAMA Network uh, publication. It's titled Teen Pregnancy and the Risk of Premature Mortality, which sounds very anodyne, right? Um, but what they're really pointing out, I mean, here, this is the, um, the subhead from the New York Times. The New York Times did an article about this, which is where I first learned about it. I don't subscribe to the Journal of the American Medical Association, but um, the subhead of the Times in the article, quote, a large analysis in Canada finds that teenagers who had babies were twice as likely to die before age 31. Let that sink in. Teenagers who have babies are twice as likely to die from a whole variety of causes before the age of 31. Uh, you're not going to hear about this on Fox so-called news. I mean, remember back in 2022 when uh, Mike DeWine, the Republican governor of Ohio, refused to allow a 10-year-old girl to leave the state because she had been raped and impregnated? Uh, to leave the state to get an abortion. She left anyway, and she got the abortion, but uh, his, his attorney general called the story a fabrication. Uh, Jim Jordan called it a lie. Uh, Fox News' Emily Capango said, uh, what I find so deeply offensive is that they had to make up a fake one. Uh, no, it was true. And, uh, you know, even uh, Christy Noem, you know, the, the governor of South Dakota who wants to become Donald Trump's vice presidential uh, the candidate, co-candidate, said, I don't believe a tragic situation should be perpetuated by another tragedy. In other words, that 10-year-old girl shouldn't get an abortion because that's a tragedy too, right? The network, the, the Journal of the American Medical Association, this study, they were able to look at 2.2 uh, million women who became pregnant as teenagers uh, versus who became pregnant after their teenage years. And uh, from 1991 to 2021, a 20, what is that, a 20-year period, 30-year period. And the reason they could do this was, of course, because Canada has a national health care system and they, they compile statistics. Um, they, the statistics were anonymized. We don't know the names of the people and those kind of things. But we do have all these statistics. And this is uh, the article, the Times, uh, the author, excuse me, of the Times article, uh, Roni Karen Rabin, or Rabin, I'm not sure how she pronounces it, um, wrote, even, uh, you know, the question was, okay, are these, is it, why is it that when teenage girls have babies, they're more likely, they're twice as likely to die before the age of 31, of a whole variety of things. Um, why is that happening, right? And the first thought was, well, teenage pregnancy is very often associated with poverty, with girls dropping out of school, with lack of education you know, those kinds of issues. I mean, that's, that's you know, you think of teenage pregnancy and you think of, of, of you know, people who are, uh, you know, having a rough time in life, uh, generally speaking, poor. So uh, they looked into that. And this is what, as the Times reported, quote, even after the researchers accounted for pre-existing health pro pro problems the girls may have had, which also could have been a, a variable, and for income and education disparities, teenagers who carried pregnancies to term were more than twice as likely to suffer, to suffer premature death later in life. Meanwhile, the rapists in the red states, uh, particularly those who want to spread their seed far and wide, their DNA, are having a fine old time. Another article published in the uh, Journal of the American Medical Association titled Rape-Related Pregnancies in 14 U.S. States with Total Abortion Bans uh, was reported on in the Houston Chronicle, which uh, reporter, the medical reporter Julian Gill noted, quote, Texas saw an estimated 26,313 rape-related pregnancies. Let me repeat that. 26,000 rape-related pregnancies during the 16 months after the state outlawed all abortions with no exceptions for survivors of rape or incest, according to a study published Wednesday in the Journal of the American Medical Association. Behind Texas, the states with no exceptions bans on abortion with the highest totals of pregnancies resulting from rape 
were Missouri, 5,800, Tennessee, 4,900, Arkansas, 4,600, Oklahoma, these are pregnancies, not rapes, pregnancies resulting from rape, Oklahoma, 4,500, Louisiana, 4,200, and Alabama, 4,300. And this is all just in basically the last year and a half, two years since the Dobbs decision and all of these states banned uh, uh, abortion altogether with no exceptions for rape or incest. The, the guess of the number of rape-caused pregnancies nationwide in the United States last year is 56,000. But 26,000 of those happened in Texas alone. Bottom line, if you're female and pregnant in a red state, no matter how old you are, no matter where you live, as long as you're in one of these red states, the legislature and the police of that state own you and your body. Four Texas counties have put on, into law bans on traveling out of state or traveling through their counties to go out of state to get an abortion. There's a statewide law in Texas that says that if you leave the state to get an abortion and somebody finds out about it, they can sue you and, and force you to pay them up to $10,000. Missouri and Idaho have enacted very, very similar bans uh, on leaving the state. Uh, Republicans call this abortion tourism. Like women just, hey, <laughs> let's get pregnant so we can go take a tour, right? Wouldn't that be fun? In addition to the religious freaks who are demanding punishment of women who get abortions, a lot of men in America simply think women shouldn't be able to make any kind of decisions. Pew reported, you know, the Pew Research Institute reported in 2020 in a painful echo of Rush Limbaugh's feminazi comments, quote, about four in 10 Republican men, 38% say women's gains have come at the, at the expense of men. And then you've got this case down in the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals that just upheld Matthew Kaczmarek, you know, the right-wing crank judge who's trying to ban Mifepristone. That one's going to go before the Supreme Court pretty soon. I think this week or next. Um, but uh, now you've got the Fifth Circuit saying that Title, title 10, Title X, they call, sometimes call it, it was Title 10, which was passed in 1970, right, during the Nixon administration. Title 10 uh, has, sets up clinics or funds clinics all around the country that provide birth control to any woman who wants it, regardless of age, confidentially. There are 150 of these clinics in Texas. Now, Texas passed a law saying that if a, if a girl under 18 wants birth control, she must have the written permission of her father or mother, of, of, her, uh, of her parents. But the federal law explicitly says that you can, that, that, Anybody, regardless of age, can get birth control with complete confidentiality. Now, under the Constitution, federal law always trumps state law. I mean, this is how Bobby Kennedy was able to, and Jack Kennedy were able to desegregate the lunch counters in the South, for example. Federal law always trumps state law. But the Fifth Circuit, a three-judge panel, uh, one of them appointed by Trump, two of them appointed by George Bush, ruled that the original ruling by Matthew Kaczmarek, the right-wing crank judge in Amarillo, who was appointed by Donald Trump also, ruled that, uh, you know, his ruling stands. The Texas law trumps the federal law. It's turning the Constitution upside down on its head. But this is what the Republicans have planned for America and for Americans' women. Um, uh, for example, the Project 2025, right? This is from a Rolling Stone report about it. Quote, those plans and many more, including proposals to attack contraception access, use the CDC to increase abortion surveillance and data collection, rescind a DOD policy to prohibit abortion travel funding, punish states that require health insurance plans to cover abortion, and retool a law that is currently protecting pregnant women with life-threatening conditions are all outlined in Project 2025's Mandate for Leadership. This is an, an actual quote from Project 2025. Quote, because liberal states have now become sanctuaries for abortion tourism, HHS should use every available tool, including the cutting of funds, to ensure that every state reports exactly how many abortions take place within its borders, at what gestational age for the so-called child, for what reason, the mother, for, for what reason, the mother's state of residence, and by what method, end quote. I inserted the so-called part in that. 
And the Republicans are all giddy about this. You know, they're, they're just, they, they want to bring back the Comstock Act. I've written about this. I've talked with, that, uh, with you about this before. Comstock Act is still on the books, and it makes it illegal to mail a condom. It, it may, illegal to mail anything that can be used for birth control, anything that can be used for an abortion, even to a hospital or a doctor's office or a pharmacy. And Republicans want to revive the Comstock Act, which, like I said, is still on the books. All it's going to take is the Supreme Court. And it's heading that way. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Bottom line, American women, wake the hell up. <laughs>